Hey guys, Jason at Hard Money Bankers. I want to clearly break down the numbers that you see on the screen uh, next to me related to buying a property uh, where you try to hit the 65% mark off of the after repair value. So in this particular example, you'll see that the purchase price is $100,000 and the rehab costs are $30,000 uh, with an after repair value of assuming 200 grand. So 65% of $200,000 is $130,000, right? which is the key number to buy. You find a property that's going to resell for 200, 65% of that's 130. And ideally, if it needs 30 grand in rehab, then you have to pay 100 for the property. 100 purchase, 30 rehab, which are those two line items uh, ahead. Okay, so we're going to start with that and kind of work your way to determine exactly what your profit margin is on that. And you'd be surprised, there's a lot of additional costs associated with, with a deal. Um, that really break into that. So obviously you don't want to buy any higher than 65% and you'll see why as we break these numbers down. But you have a 35% equity question. So let's say you buy it for 100, you put 30 into it. Here's some additional costs that you're going to have on the front end. We have front end costs and we have back end costs. On the front end costs, you're going to have closing, um, potentially lender points if you're using a lender, carrying costs, and then holding costs. Now again, this could change uh, the, the lender and the carry costs uh, as, you, as you see those two. Those could change if you use your own money or if you use a bank or if you use a private lender with different terms, but uh, hear me out as we go through that. So your closing costs are gonna be 5%, transfer, recordation, title insurance, uh, potentially taxes that are due, um, upfront insurance that you need on the property. No matter if you buy this for cash, hard money, private money, bank, it doesn't matter, the 5% is gonna be the 5%. So in this particular case, uh, it's gonna be about 5%. So this particular case is gonna be $6,500. Now the lender cost I put is 5%. Now for us as, at Hard Money Bankers, our terms are 13% of three points. So that's three points, but again, there might be additional lender costs. Um, you're gonna need lender's title insurance uh, that if you don't have a lender, you're not gonna have lender's title insurance. Uh, you'll just have owner's title insurance. Uh, there might be document production, document prep from your attorney, from, their, or from the lender's attorney. You might have some inspections or draws uh, costs associated with that. You might have an appraisal or evaluation or inspection costs. So again, it might not be a total of 5%, but it could if you're using a hard money lender. And obviously, you know, even at three points, you, you might have a few extra thousand dollars in, in costs just from going in that in that route. So, okay, so that's lender cost. Now, obviously, if you, you're using a bank, maybe they charge one point, then that'll be less. You're using a private lender with zero points, that could be less. Or if you're using um, uh, your own cash, there might not be any anything in that. But let's just go off 5% because most real estate investors out there uh, typically we'll use a hard money lender to, to make these deals work. Okay, so after that, you have carrying costs. Now at our company, our interest rate's 13%. Now that's 13% annualized, right? So that's 13% uh, over a 12 month period of time. So for every one month that you hold the property, that you pay the loan, it costs about um, you know a point or so. So what you do is let's say $130,000, I'll just say this $130,000, uh, at 13%. So if you have a loan out for a year, it's gonna cost you $16,900. You divide that by 12, your monthly payment's 1408. So average life of a loan, you flip a property, it takes you maybe 30 days to renovate it, 30, 60 days to renovate it, put it on the market, sell it. Uh, let's say you have the money out for, for four months, um, four or five months, uh, in this particular case, it'd be five months. So if you have the money out for five months, um, that'll cost about 5%, so $6,500. Okay, again, if you use bank money, it might be cheaper, private money might be cheaper, whatever the case is. Um, and then you have holding costs. Holding costs are like utility bills, maybe additional insurance that you didn't pay for on the front end, um, things like that. We like to estimate 2%, okay? So hopefully that breaks all those costs down. Those holding costs have nothing to do with the lender. So you have those costs no matter what. Um, okay, so your front end costs come out to $152,000, $152,100. So that's before, you know, the resale. So right now, $152,000 are your front end costs. Now let's talk about your back end costs. Typically you have a real estate agent that sells the property at 6%. Now again, that's not to say you can't do it at 5% or 4% or do it yourself and then just pay 3% to a, to a, sell, to a, a selling agent who comes to find, give you a buyer but approximately 6%. So that's 12 grand because it's based off of the exit uh, price of the 200. Then you have your closing uh, costs. Again, 
uh, even if you sell it yourself without a realtor, you're still going to have closing costs, which is the transfer of the property, the transfer tax of the property, and some other miscellaneous title fees. And then you have your seller credit. Uh, again, you might not offer seller credit, but most flips, most um, median housing price neighborhoods, you're selling to a first time home buyer. So chances are they might need seller credit on that. So that's another 3%, which is another $6,000. So that's $21,000. So if you look at the bottom, you have $152,000 in front end, $21,000 in back end, which is a total of $173,000 uh, on this property. You subtract that by the $200,000 resale and you get $27,000. Not a bad, not a bad profit. Twenty-seven thousand dollars on a particular uh, deal like this. Typically, if you've heard me speak about your potential on a fix and flip, you want to make about twenty percent of your purchase and acquisition combined. Your purchase and acquisition was one thirty. Twenty percent of that would be twenty-six thousand dollar profit. In this case, it's a twenty-seven thousand dollar profit. These are the types of deals that you want to try to go after. Try to find these particular deals. These are good ones if you can find it. Sixty-five percent based off the after repair value minus construction costs, minus the rehab costs. That's what the purchase price needs to be. Now, again, a lot of investors want to push this to maybe the 70%. Well, you see if you're buying this thing at 70% or 70% or in this particular case is 140. Uh, so that's $10,000. Is that what it is? So, so I think that's what it is. Let me just double check while I got this handicap. Yeah, 140. Uh, so for instance, if you do 140, $10,000 more in costs happen if you had to pay more for it, right? So that means your profit goes from 27 to 17. It's getting a little bit slim. So use these numbers, use this formula. Um, most of these things are hard costs if you buy them in cash, you know, or bank or private or hard money, they're, they're still there. Uh, the, the only wiggle room obviously is uh, your lender costs and potentially your realtor or your seller credit costs, okay? Hopefully you found this helpful. If you need anything, reach out to me, Jason at hardmoneybankers.com. This is what we do every day. Very passionate about it, happy to help, okay? Take care, reach out on any platform that you, you want or comment if uh, you have any questions. Thanks.